This is the first episode of What's Actually In, a series where we take a look at what makes up some of the world's most popular and not so popular food and drink. Spam. We've all heard of it, the mysterious processed meat served in a tin can that you open with a key. You've probably heard that it was really popular during World War II, or that it's used extensively in Hawaiian food. You might have heard the Monty Python sketch. Have you got anything without spam in it? Spam, egg, sausage and spam, it's not got much spam in it. I don't want any spam! Or heard James May himself talking about it once or twice. Absolute nonsense. No, it's true, there you go. But what's actually in spam? Well, we're here to find out. It's stated in the Oxford Encyclopedia of Food and Drink in America that spam was created to increase the sales of pork shoulder, which was a very unpopular cut of meat at the time. Spam's name was given by Ken Danu, the brother of a company executive at Hormel. Now there's been a lot said about the meaning of the word spam. Some think the name comes from an abbreviation of spiced ham. Others think it stands for shoulder, pork, and ham. Spam. That one certainly makes more sense to me anyway. After its invention, spam became incredibly popular during World War II. This was because it was really hard to deliver fresh meat to the front lines. It earned itself many names during this time, including special army meat and meatloaf without basic training. In fact, by the end of the war, more than 68,000 tons of Spam was delivered to the US Army. From there, it was then introduced to islands such as Guam, Hawaii, Okinawa, the Philippines, and many others. Spam has become so popular over the decades that in 1991, a Spam museum opened in its hometown of Austin, Minnesota. It was originally called the Hormel Foods First Century Museum to celebrate the company's 100 year anniversary but there's a lot more to spam than could fit in that can-sized spot. So in 2001, the museum moved to a much bigger location. In 2014, it moved again to a new downtown spot. Today, the museum is focused around Can Central, the heart of the museum with interactive exhibits where you can watch a sizzle reel of the latest spam media clips. There's also the World Market, where you can learn about spam advertising, and also how it's loved in 44 countries around the world. There's a World War II exhibit, of course, and Spam Brand 101, where you can learn all about the different varieties of spam. No museum is complete without the Spam Gift Shop, where spam ambassadors will spam you with pieces of spam. Nice. Now we've learned a little bit more about this wartime delicacy, as Margaret Thatcher used to call it, let's delve into what's in it. Over the years, there have been many variations of Spam flavors, including Spam hot and spicy, Spam garlic, and a limited edition in late 2019, Spam pumpkin spice, which does go to prove that you can get pumpkin spice versions of literally everything. But for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on the original and best, Spam classic. The ingredients of Spam are surprisingly simple. Pork with ham, salt, water, modified potato starch, sugar and sodium nitrate, plus some natural gelatin forms during the cooking process. Wait, sodium nitrate? Isn't that really bad for you? Well, sodium nitrate is a naturally occurring chemical compound that contains both nitrogen and oxygen. We actually get most sodium nitrate in our diet from vegetables but that is a bit of an oversimplification. There have been studies which show that sodium nitrate can damage cells and can cause cancer under certain conditions, but it is used in a lot of processed meat. Why is that? Well, it helps keep harmful bacteria at bay and also preserves color. So the sodium nitrate in spam keeps that really vibrant pink color, even when it's cooked, compared to you know when you cook a hamburger and it goes that kind of brownish gray color. So I still don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's definitely a very pink thing. How does it stack up nutritionally? Well, for every 57 gram or two ounce serving of original Spam, there is 108 calories, 16 grams of fat, seven grams of protein, one gram of carbs, and 40 milligrams of cholesterol. So I don't think there's any danger of Spam being classified as a health food anytime soon, but as part of a healthy balanced diet, etc, etc. So there we have it. That is Spam. Do you like Spam? What's your verdict on Spam? What's your favourite way to eat Spam? 
I've now said spam way too many times in this video that it has kind of lost all meaning to me, but I'm probably qualified enough to go out and fill in my spam ambassador form. I don't like spam! Spam, 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 spam. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment and subscribe to the Food Tribe YouTube channel. If there's anything you'd like us to investigate next, let us know in the comments below.